Welcome, friends and patrons, to another Drawing for Beginners video brought to you by my project over at patreon.com forward slash dagonpoint. Links to it and my other social media output can be found in the description below. Today, I would like to cover what I consider to be the number one step to better visual storytelling, namely thumbnailing and compositional sketching. What are they? What are they useful for? And why you should do them? In my experience, it is a step far too often ignored by newer students and artists starting out. I include myself in this. I ignored this lesson to my own detriment for far, far too long. So what are they? Well, thumbnails are small, short drawings that seek to answer specific questions. They're a way of visually problem-solving issues that might arise in your artwork, kind of like what you're seeing playing out on the screen right now. No, thumbnail should take you more than two to four minutes and should not be bigger than a half a postcard, for those of you who remember what postcards were. The video that you are currently watching is sped up, but not so much. As you can see, I'm not spending too much time and effort on any one image. Here, there are no details, there are no colors, and just basic areas of tones. And there are many, many of them. Generally, you want to um, generate about 10 to 20 or more different images. This should represent an investment of no more than half an hour to 40 minutes. And as you do more of this, and as you gain experience, this will go quicker and yield better results. Trust me, every minute spent composing and thumbnailing first will save you hours in the long run. So what are they useful for? Well, the thumbnails seek to ask and answer specific visual questions for you as the artist. These are not drawings meant for the public. They are, not, they are your own notes and so do not require any level of finish. You draw them until you can clearly see what you were trying to solve. They are just for you and then you move on. Consider things like your composition, your general areas of lights and darks, as well as the flow of lines and shapes. Consider too the placement and size of your focal point. Importantly, this is where you resolve the viewer's relationship to the subject matter. You see, far too often we think of an artwork as only about being, as only being about the subject matter, but it is not. An artwork is a relationship between the viewer and the subject matter. How far are they from each other? Are they close? Are they above? Are they below? How are they lit? How is the viewer meant to feel about the artwork? All of these are critical elements for visual storytelling. And by considering as many of these facets as possible, you are clarifying for yourself just how you want to feel the viewer to feel about your subject matter. Because no image exists in a vacuum and without a witness. And this is essentially what you're trying to do with all of these little thumbnails, is you want to clarify in your mind the end result. You want to see it as clearly as possible. You want to be able to see down the line for as far as possible. But this is not just important for images drawn from your imagination. When you are taking on figure drawing or a portrait, or even a still life or a landscape, take a few moments to consider your point of view and the relationship you wish to build between the image and the viewer. When you do this, challenge yourself to make the images as interesting as possible. Push the elements in your composition. If the figure is towering above the viewer, how high? How high can you make it before the composition breaks and becomes unreadable? Too many images are middle-sized objects in the middle ground of a middle-sized format. We, as artists, can do more. You will also notice that, my drawing, that in my drawings I start out with a box. This is me considering the format. Is my image landscape, portrait or square? Does it need a special visualized output like an oval or a circle? This is one of the biggest influences on how we read an image and it is something that is often, far too often left as an afterthought. At this stage, I'm not introducing color, only large areas of tones. You can, of course, but that stretches out the time spent thumbnailing. I, at this stage, I am much more interested in my values and the overall read of an image. You see, I want to solve as many of my problems as possible with the smallest investment of time. Hours and hours into your painting or drawing is not the time to realize that the lighting would have actually looked better from above or that it would have been better to have the figure in the foreground. 
It is a huge time of wa- a huge waste of time and energy. We've all done it, and it is soul sapping. <clears throat> you see, in my opinion, an artwork is the result of a sequence of decisions. It stands or falls on the quality of those decisions. We, as artists, want to make as many good calls as possible and avoid as many poor choices as possible. Why then leave such important elements such as format, readability, composition, rhythm, flow to chance when we make an artwork? We want to front load those decisions. We want to make sure that we have given our artwork the very best of our consideration. After all, we're going to be investing hours, possibly days and weeks into creating this image. Why not spend a few minutes optimizing the overall read? So why should you do them? Now, you might not have been convinced by the possible time saving, and you might not still be convinced <clears throat> that, um, that you need to go through all this process. You might be working from an existing image or an existing source, and you don't think that it's necessary. You might decide that you know exactly what you want to draw and how you want to draw it. But these are all good reasons to do more thumbnailing and compositional sketching, not less. In the first place, you are going to be familiarizing yourself with the subject matter. You will be figuring out what you need to emphasize, where the tricky passages are, how to develop textures, how to better draw what's in front of you. As you do so, you are also calibrating your values. Much, much like a singer or a musician tune their instruments before performance. Remember, thumbnails are sketching. Thumbnails are sketches. It is drawing. It is not an accidental byproduct or homework that you have to get to uh, before you get to the real thing. This is the real thing. You are drawing, and these are the results of you resolving form, shapes, and line, and coming to terms with your subject matter. Secondly, you are practicing and improving your drawing with your chosen subject. You are increasing your familiarity with them. Thirdly, you are building up a catalogue of textures, objects, forms and tricky specialised subjects that you might have to resolve before you dive in to your finished work. Do you know how to resolve the hand or the hair or the, the tree that's in the background? Your official piece or your final canvas is not the place for you to suddenly have to try and figure out how to draw hair and paint trees, or how a hand is meant to look when it's holding a long sword. Do it first in your thumbnails, work it out visually, find out and plot your way through. Lastly, and most importantly, you are training yourself to generate ideas, to think creatively. Everyone at least has two or three ideas in them. But you are an artist and you shouldn't be settling for what everybody else does. You should be coming up with the ideas that no one or very few have had. And these are not found in the first idea or image that comes to mind. They are found deep in the inner recesses of your imagination. They are outside the box where no one else goes. You owe it to yourself and you owe it to your art. So hopefully I have convinced you of the importance of spending a bit of time thumbnailing and sketching. Try it out and let me know what you think. If you're interested in more, follow the channel or support me on Patreon or not. And remember to draw, draw, draw.